can get this sucker in there and give her a tappy tap. Canadian designation is M4A276 wet. And so M4 is the medium tank 4, which is the Sherman. All Shermans were M4s of some variety or another. Uh, like factory again, I don't want to get into post-war stuff. And then the A2 stands for the uh, twin pack Detroit diesels. So this has uh, uh, two six-cylinder Detroit diesels in it. That's the A2. A3 is the 4GAA, A4 is the multi-bank, and on and on. Um, the 76 refers to the uh, millimeter of the gun, so it's a 76 millimeter cannon, and uh, the wet refers to wet stowage. This two wheels will spin separately, and then we're going to start bringing the track back, because pretty soon it's going to join itself on the ground again. Got you. So we're going to have to hook a chain and start pulling. Well, this one's off, eh? Oh, well, they both are off. Yeah, we can just pull them back. Yeah, it's off the boat. Yeah, let me just go up there and make sure we're in neutral. That way, the two sides are quite neutral. This is heavy. <laughs> for the tank is uh, 76 wet or 76 W. Um, wet stowage refers to how you stow the ammunition in the tank. Uh, early on in the Shermans, the ammunition was all stowed above the belt line. Uh, in the sponsons, which are the, which are the uh, horizontal plates under here. So all the ammunition was right up in the sides. Uh, and so if, if, if the tank got penetrated on the side, um, you, you're likely going to hit ammunition and that was the end of the tank. Later on in the war, um, they discovered pretty early, if you come this way, you can just have a look at this on, on, on the A3, on Bullrush, they started adding these plates. So that would thicken up the armor where the shells were. So right behind this plate is where the ammunition would be stowed. Um, unfortunately, the Germans got pretty smart and they realized, shoot at the plate, because that's where the ammunition is. So that was kind of an a, a intro fix to try to uh, address the problem while they were coming up with a solution. And the solution was um, to stow the ammunition below the tracks. Um, I shouldn't say below the tracks, but below this fender line uh, in the bottom of the hull and put them in bins that are filled with a water solution that won't freeze. 
um, but isn't highly flammable. <laughs> and so if this bin gets penetrated by anything, shrapnel, another round, and it sets off the ammunition here, hopefully the, 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 the water jackets spraying the water when they get penetrated will put the fire out and possibly prevent the tank from being destroyed or at the very least give the crew more time to get out. This will be the outside loop, so we'll start on this end. In? in? Yeah. So what I'm thinking is saying, we try, we'll drag that up into a little coil and start it. Would that work? I've never tried to roll them on their sides. Okay. Usually we just roll them, pick them, roll them, and then they start to be a big, and yeah. then flop them. Okay, so should we pull this up into a circle, then flip it on its thing, and then roll them up? Sure. Is that what you're thinking? Hey, I, whatever works, there's, I, there's no... I don't have a set way, Steve. I haven't done it enough that... Well, let's let's try to pull this into there, like a circle. Yeah. Well, let's get a couple of pry bars, then we'll flip it over. Yeah. Because at least we'll have a, like, a, a start. I'm in. Okay. I'm in.
fuck is going on in here? Oh, we tried to do something sneaky. It's come back to bite us in the ass. Okay, so now I want to make sure it doesn't flop over again. Do you want to put some under to it to fall too far? Uh, then we got to pull that out somehow. Yeah, at least then we can lift up with a fork with it. Let's try that again, except do a better job. We'll change it up first, then go for it, okay? Here. So I'm going to unhook and then. Okay. Disaster averted. Okay, I'll grab that chain for locking it up. That was close. It just about was heavy enough to drag my forklift over sideways. We could have scrabbled it. I thought he was going to go through the center. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Normally the reason the track would be off because in the field it would get broken. It would either maybe get loose and you know walk off or perhaps the link would actually break and end connector might come off. So you find yourself in the field pretty quick having to repair the track. Um, <laughs> what we were able to do here, not under fire, was uh, you know bit of a uh, you know bit of a comedy of errors trying to experiment and make things work. Obviously in the field real soldiers um, they wouldn't have that luxury of just running around looking for whatever's available. They'd have the tools that came on the tank. Um, so basically all that track has to be manhandled, uh, which means you need enough guys to move it. So I think we saw how you know, heavy that track is, um, and these guys are moving around by hand. You know, we had the luxury of whatever tools we could find, an air compressor, you, know, you wouldn't have that in the field. So, you know, and, and, and not to mention the fact that nobody's shooting at us, which is kind of... Uh, well, kind of the way we like it around here, but <laughs> you know, if someone was actually shooting at you, maybe you were in night, uh, at night you were in the mud, um, I mean, you know, add, add, add uh, you know, 20-fold to the, uh, the challenge of putting that track back on and getting on your way. 
and I'm sure you'd have some, you know, somebody beaking at you somewhere because you weren't where you were supposed to be because you were sitting on the broken track. So you, you watch them with a bar through the tracks and several guys and they're actually stringing the track out by hand. Absolutely amazing. You know, I look at it now and it just hurts my back looking at it. Like it just, we're not that generation for sure. So anyway, that's kind of what we were up to today and uh, you know, what real soldiers do in this event, which we're not. Yeah.